It's, it's coffee, coffee break. break, episode 132. Whoa! Whew. After last week, where everything happened with the mm-hmm. Nintendo Direct, back to the week of, well, some things are kind of happening. <laughs> some things are happening, but really the big thing to talk about is the first half of the bear. Yes. Which we will get to, of course, at the end when we do our reviews. Yeah. You guys know the process. There is news to talk about. There is some DC news. There's some Marvel news. We're going to start off with uh, One Piece. Yeah. Season 2 for Netflix. Mm-hmm. Um, huge casting announcements. They casted Smoker. They mm-hmm. casted uh, some of the Broke Works. Yep, yep. Uh, one of the bad guys for Tony's w- Warpool? Wapool? Wapool? Is that... He's like one of the bad guys that they have to fight in order to get Tony on their team. Nice. I'm excited. Um, the, the only the only thing that bothers me about all these casting announcements, um, I don't know anyone except for Mr. Three, uh-huh. who is David... Uh, he was um, like Polka Dot Man. Man. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Huge DC fan. Big mm-hmm. comic book fan. Um, excited to have him as number three. But there is no Tony Tony Chopper. Not yet. There is no Vivi. Not yet. And there is no Croc. But we got like four people's uh, casting announcements one day. And then like a day or two later, we got four more people's announcements. Mm -hmm. So maybe like even by the time this podcast comes out, maybe the the day you're listening to it, (laughs) if it's two days away from when we're recording it, maybe we'll have more. Like Okay. (laughs) I hope so. Or here's my thoughts Hmm. about season two. We'll start Alabasta, but we will not finish that story. Yeah? Yep. I don't know how long we could take on Tony's on the the mountain. (laughs) At at least two or three episodes. Yeah, based off of the other episodes. They have to get back in the boat. They got to sail to Alabasta. They got to get through the desert to get to the kingdom. Uh Uh-huh. There's a lot of stuff. There's Mm -hmm. a lot of other side characters. Yeah. I mean, it could be its own season. Yeah. And the first one, the first season did so well, I wouldn't be surprised if they wanted to, like, stretch things out a little longer. Well, I was thinking about, uh, like, way later on, Gear 4, Luffy versus uh, Don Flamingo, Do Flamingo. Yeah. (laughs) Um, Because I was like, we'll never see that. Yeah, I don't know. (laughs) I don't know how many seasons this could have, but (laughs) I guess we'll find out. (laughs) The interesting thing here about One Piece is that the... um, the showrunner for the first season is stepping back. He is still an executive producer. Yeah. But the new showrunner is the guy who did Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief yeah. television show. This does make me a little nervous. Yes. Um, uh, because I, didn't, I didn't like the flow of Percy. I didn't either. But also, I just I didn't like most things about Percy. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, there's only so much you could do with a child's character. Why is it? Why are they stepping away from showrunner role, only to be executive? I think because they have more faith in this new showrunner. I hope so. I wanna. I don't wanna like be all doom and gloom right off the bat. I wanna be hopeful. <laughs> he can do magical worlds. Yes. So at least we got that covered. It, but but I've, there's been too many shows that we've watched where the first season was really good, and then the follow-up seasons weren't as good. <laughs> yeah, there is the the fear of sequels. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, July 1st, so this next week, Capcom will be doing a 25-minute presentation. Ooh. They are remastering Dead Rising. Nice. Do you remember that one? Frank, he's a photographer. He's stuck in a mall. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, I did not like the game. No, not into it. But it's cool that that one's coming back. And they're going to talk about that, uh, what is that, the Okami thing? Okami? Do you remember they showed this off last year? Where you're like, you have a sword fan thing, and you're using, like, spirits to fight other spirits? That was last year? Yeah. And no like way. demons in the forest. Oh my god, it was last year. Yeah. I am looking forward to this. I do really want to see it, actually. <laughs> so, oh, and then they're going to showcase uh, Resident Evil 7 for the <laughs> iOS. <laughs> and I was like, um, guys, you went back too many. <laughs> 7 came out years ago. A long time ago. <laughs> I wasn't even in college. Well, 
Yeah. So I mean, like in a weird way. Yeah. Seven or eight years now? Dude, it was... I was living with my parents. It was a long <laughs> time ago. Yeah. And I'm like, this is old news. But now you can play it on your phone. <laughs> Yippee. Well, I, was, I was reading something interesting about these games coming, these AAA games coming onto the iOS uh-huh. and their sales numbers. They're horrible. Oh, They're dude. god-awful. Well, no one wants to play a... Big um, grand game on their phone like the that. The one who's <laughs> suffering the most is Ubisoft. Because they released Assassin's Creed Mirage on the iOS. Why? Um, they had, like, a couple hundred thousand downloads. Sure. But then you got to spend 50 bucks to unlock the rest of the game, right? Of course. <laughs> Only 300,000? No, 3,000 people did it? That's got to be dedication. 3,000... People. I can't imagine a lot of people would want to play that game with a, a tiny handheld touchscreen. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Resident Evil 7 and 4. No, 8. 7's not out yet. Mm-hmm. But Resident Evil 4 Remake and Resident Evil 8 weren't doing that well either. Yeah. And uh, Death Stranding's in there too. So this push to go onto the iPhone isn't working that well it's so weird i don't i don't even know why they would want to do this (laughs) do you remember me talking about the playstation portal oh yeah and here's what i was saying about the portal that it's 200 dollars. it's literally a ps vita but you have to always be connected to your playstation 5 yeah (laughs) so now you've made an overpriced piece of technology Uh that nobody wants Mm -hmm. like you're no one's going to succeed in the handheld world like Nintendo. See, that's the thing. Nintendo doesn't need to slap their games randomly onto the iPhone. No, they don't. Because their, their console already is portable. Mm-hmm. And even before then, they mastered the 3DS. The DS and the 3DS, that, that perfect. Try I Game Boy. I truly don't understand why the others, PlayStation and Microsoft, why they didn't try to do it again. And the problem was, like, with the PSP or the PS Vita was that there were no games for it that people wanted to play. Mm-hmm. That was the main problem. And rather than be like, oh yes, we should just put more games on this console, there's like, oh, we'll just give up on the on the idea entirely. And it's like, what do you mean? <laughs> How often are you taking your portable handheld Nintendo outside? Not often. Yeah, uh, there's just a point when you grow up and you're just like, I don't need a handheld device. Because I have a console and I'm just going to sit down in front of the TV anyways. I mean, my, my biggest thing, like, I'll play it, if, if specifically if you're already using the TV for something, mm-hmm. it's very convenient to, like, hold my Switch up close to me instead. Yeah. Or if, it, like, in the middle of the night and you don't want to make a lot of noise. The, the dream that I had for what the Switch would eventually become mm-hmm. was always when my dad was watching football and I didn't want to watch it with him, but there's mm-hmm. nothing else to do. Mm-hmm. Thanks for stealing my coaster. Um, I'm so sorry. <laughs> it was close to me. I assumed it was mine. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I wanted to play video games, but I couldn't. Mm-hmm. And I was like, it would be cool if they made a console that could be handheld. Mm-hmm. That, that that exists already. So Yeah. They yeah, did it. Every, just, everything, every technology thing we dreamed of as kids. That's here. It's here. Like the ability to pause TV or fast forward through parts. Wireless headphones. Mm-hmm. I always dreamt of those. Oh, my God. I love them. <laughs> yeah. I always have one in my ear. Yeah. I, I see other people always having them in their ear. And it's like, yeah, I get it. It's like... It's just so convenient. Yeah. I but, can have conversations or I can listen to music or podcasts and not have to deal with the real world while I'm in it. I can, like, be in, like, the grocery <laughs> store or something and bend over and not have to worry about my cord getting tangled up on oh, something yeah, and yanking cord. my headphones off or... Yep. Ugh. <laughs> Okay, so here's the uh, MCU stuff. Oh, yeah. Kevin Feige announced that the Fantastic Four will be set in the 1960s in a different universe. A different universe? Yes. Okay. So something will probably happen, which will have them come to universe 616. I assume it would be Kang-related, if anything. (laughs) Maybe. Maybe Kang. Uh, Benedict Cumberbatch revealed Avengers 5 will start filming soon. What were, what were we saying yesterday about oh, Avengers? So, Avengers 5 doesn't come out until May 25th of 2026. Ish. Yeah, I think and I'm it, dead on that one. And it might still get pushed till 2020. 
Seven. It did get pushed back. You remember that? It, yeah. <laughs> but Endgame came out 2018, 2019? It's been almost a whole day. Ten years. Ten years to get another Avengers film. It's good. That's too long, dude. It's way too long. I, way too long. Yeah. <laughs> and there was no cool moment where you could say, like, oh, Civil War is a mm-hmm. is an Avengers movie. The closest we got was Doctor Strange 2. Yeah, and even which, then... It was just... Yeah, that's not really an excuse. The interesting thing is I don't think Benedict was supposed to talk. Whoops. <laughs> and he also, because he knows this information, kind of revealed that Doctor Strange will be in Avengers 5. Wait, which Benedict was talking? Cumberbatch. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so I thought that was interesting. I also had a profound moment where I realized that this is not the first time Deadpool and Wolverine were on the silver screen together. Yep. Uh, X-Men Origins Wolverine. The classic. Everyone's <laughs> most beloved favorite movie oh my goodness <laughs> i thought it was funny because i realized wait they trolled us again <laughs> and they didn't tell us <laughs> they got us <laughs> and then here's the craziest thing about the mcu captain america 4 yeah. brave new world yep is estimated to cost the budget around 350 million to 375 million jeez end game uh-huh. Cost about four hundred and twenty million dollars. Movies are getting. How is this one close? Because with with Endgame, I imagine it was a lot of paying all those actors yes. to be there. Yes. How is this one close to That's that? That's what's freaking me out. Is there going to be a lot of people in this one? There's going to be a lot of CGI. There will. There's sh- going to be a Red Hulk. There sure will be a lot of CGI. <laughs> and I was just like, um, for as much money as it costs to make this, mm-hmm. you have to make that double. Yeah. In order to say it's successful. Mm-hmm. And Breaking that's a even huge is considered number. a failure. Yeah. And they're definitely not going to. The movies are too expensive nowadays. Yeah. that Well, that's what kind of bummed me out. I was like, great. So this one's going to flop whether how good it is or not. Yeah. Because it's just a ridiculous number to reach. Well, I don't. I, they're reaching these huge numbers. And I think it's a lot of it. Well, a lot of it is just the economy is horrible. But also, I think they waste a lot of money on really stupid, superfluous things. Like... Not even things that make, like, the filming process better or easier, you know? Like, catering is notoriously terrible on set, so it's not like they're paying the people a lot of money to get nice food. They're spending a lot of money to, like, fast-track the special effects. It's always the special effects. It's the special effects and the star value there. Rather than pay, like, $50 to have a seamstress make you a cool outfit, they're paying some... It's like poor overworked intern five times as much as that to like cgi the stupid outfit onto a character and it'll look terrible in comparison yes it will um yeah that's just a ridiculous amount to try and surpass mm-hmm. uh hbo's harry potter remake found its showrunner and director who uh together they worked on secession and the director did some episodes for game of thrones so th- those are some pretty high standing shows this is very serious dramatic with a lot of effort and energy yeah, some could say they're good yeah and they definitely <laughs> didn't win all the awards yeah <laughs> but they weren't interesting for their time so <laughs> <laughs> i don't know I, it's just <sighs> it's a lot of pressure to put onto this franchise that I still don't think it needs to be a reboot. I don't know anyone who really wants this. Like, no matter how good they make Potterheads. it. Potterheads. I don't even think Potterheads want this. Because they're so, like, dedicated to the original. They're not going to want to see it changed slightly. If they don't, if Hermione doesn't look exactly the way they want Hermione to look, heaven forbid, it's a, a person with a skin tone that's slightly darker than mayonnaise. Oh my god. <laughs> Uh, well, no casting has been done yet. Um, the Harry Potter and Welcome to Derry, which is the prequel to It. I'm sorry. What do you mean the prequel to It? It. Like the like Stephen King's It? Yes. Harry Potter and Welcome to Derry? Welcome to Derry is the prequel to It. Is Welcome to Derry separate? 
or the Harry Potter subtitle, Welcome the, to Derry. Why would they be together? <laughs> the way you said it, okay, the way you said it, I thought you were saying, like, Harry Potter, the Goblet of Fire. I thought it was Harry Potter, Welcome, welcome to, to Derry. <laughs> and I was... Um, and this one, Harry gets molested by Pennywise. <laughs> I was so confused. Come in the sewer, little I'm magic like, boy. I don't remember anything <laughs> related to no. Stephen King. No. <laughs> so, Welcome to Dairy is a prequel series to the It movies. Yes. <laughs> um, it will have what's his name? Skarsgård. Yeah, Skarsgård. Bill. <laughs> Soon to be the Crow. Woo. <laughs> um, nothing to say there about the Crow. Everybody's hating it. Uh huh. But uh, they were both supposed to be Max exclusives. Okay. They've been rebranded to HBO Originals. Oh, so wait yeah. a minute. I'm confused about this move. I thought we scrubbed out the word HBO. Yeah, now they want to bring it back. <sighs> Everyone told them. Everyone sat there and told them, and they ignored everybody, and now they're realizing that we were all right. Yep. <laughs> oh, jeez. They want that HBO back so i'm gonna be reeling imagining harry potter in the in universe or it in the harry potter universe <laughs> <laughs> that's what a bog art is oh. <laughs> <laughs> um hbo also green lit green lanterns or something called lanterns for eight episodes which will be a buddy cop duo of hal jordan and john stewart yes as green lanterns finally Finally! This I've, has been in the works for years. I've wanted this for so long. <laughs> I, I, I gave up hope. I should have believed. <laughs> Never give up hope. Your dreams will come true. The companies will actually make the show you want them to make. <laughs> yeah, it took, what, to reboot all of the DC universe? Yeah. <laughs> Oops. And then one guy going, oh yeah, uh, everyone keeps wanting the lanterns, we should probably do that. It, it, it probably meant now, I just gotta hope it's actually good. <laughs> well, That's the other thing. <laughs> just CGI the suit. Uh-huh, yeah. It will work perfectly. <laughs> it can't possibly go wrong. <laughs> I'm excited for lanterns. There is no other news on it other than they're gonna start production. And where it's gonna fit with the DCU. I don't know. I don't know if he's going to be all... I don't know if he's going to be, like, too worried about those kind of facts and numbers. Like, or is it going to be more, like, loosey-goosey for a while? Like, this could be related to what we're doing down the line, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> um, there's been some set photos of Superman. Yeah. And Rick Flagg Sr. has shown up on set... Um, Oh, I can't remember his name. He played Crossbones in the MCU. Yeah. He will be voicing Rick Flag Sr. for Creature Commandos, which is an animated series which will come out this December on Max. And then he will play the character in live action. That is cool. The Creature Commandos are what? World War II? Uh, World War I? Yeah, they were, weren't they? <laughs> so I'm a little confused how he's still alive. And you know, if, what is he, like a vampire? I don't think so. <laughs> well, maybe that's what it is. Uh, a lot of superheroes have weird, long lit lives for no real explained reason. True. <laughs> Mr. Terrific was found on set. Yeah. huh He looks the same. Um, I, I, and... yeah, I, you, you told me, and I was like, really? <laughs> Mr. Terrific? <laughs> yeah, he was there. <laughs> I just wasn't am expecting... Of all the people. <laughs> and then someone spotted John Cena as... Um, peacemaker on set yeah and he looked way too happy great picture <laughs> he spotted the he spotted the camera yeah. and he's staring all the way across the field smiling at it <laughs> with his giant gun out <laughs> what a delight what a treasure of a human being <laughs> <laughs> so i th there's another thing uh season one of peacemaker isn't canon what yeah but season two is well i guess because at the end of season one we see you know the flash and aquaman and oh yeah they did show up at the end of yeah that. they were too late to help save the day <laughs> you fucked fish <laughs> <No>. <laughs> it was a very good scene actually <laughs> uh jared padalecki also best known as sam winchester yeah um his ranger lone ranger got canceled it was a cw show it was a remake of dang that he's very upset about that he said CW can't afford to make cheap shows, and when they do, they just screw them up. And so he's been very upset and vocal about it. Damn. 
the boys season four came out Mm -hmm. um they've been wanting or the fans have been wanting to get him into the boys yeah um, because jensen ackles is already in it Mm -hmm. the producer said um if anything crazy happens that would be why he's not gonna be in season five so he basically confirmed nice. that Jerry Padalecki will be in season five of The Boys. Hell yeah. <laughs> I thought that was cute. That is cute. Uh, Channing Tatum showed up randomly, and he said he wants to do Jump Street 23. Yeah. <laughs> and Jonah Hill's still interested. <laughs> <laughs> A bunch of actors are like, yeah, I want to do this, but the sequel now. And it's like, I don't know, I'd have to hire to the sequels, everybody. <laughs> I mean, I guess what else is Channing Tatum doing these days? I thought Jump Street 22 is better than 21. Um, I don't remember 21 Jump Street. I don't even know if I've ever watched it. <laughs> I know that I think about it. <laughs> okay. It, it's funny. It's just I thought the second one was way funnier. And yeah, they never did 23. At the end of 22, they did like this well, montage of what all the sequels would be. Mm-hmm. Jump Street like 55 and they're in space or something like that. Yeah. So it felt like it was the natural ending of the story, but now, years later, Channing Tatum's saying he wants to do... It just sounds like these actors just get bored, and they have nothing to do, and so they get, like, reminiscent about the old things they used to do. Yes. Speaking of, do you have that documentary on your on your list of yes, things you're talking about? I okay, do. we'll get to it. <laughs> um, and then Ubisoft, they also announced that more Assassin's Creed games are on the way, uh-huh. And that they are also going to be doing remakes. Yeah. Uh, they did not confirm that Project Obsidian is Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag remake. But it's been pretty much confirmed right there. What? Because the, uh, the uh, skull and bones didn't really work no. out? No. <laughs> Maybe we should just... That oh. quadruple A <laughs> water feature. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> you waited, what, 12 years for this? <laughs> They, the guy was talking about how he wants an Assassin's Creed every year, and he wants them to be different so they don't all have the same experience. He was talking about the remakes and saying that there's still rich worlds to explore in these past games, and to bring them to modern standards. It's just very ambitious. It is. It take a lot of effort. Well, I was like, so you're going to do four because that's the most famous one. Mm-hmm. You're going to do two because that's the second famous one. Yeah. Are you going to touch three? Are you going to touch Liberty? There's a lot Are you of... going to touch Rogue? Yeah, all those weird ones. What <laughs> about Unity? Unity's a great story. Trash game. Mm-hmm. Please think, redo and, that. And Unity's a great example of what happens when they try to push out a game every year, but don't give the developing team the time to do it properly. Don't forget what happened after Unity. What happened after Unity? Uh, what was it? Sync? Oh. Synchronicity? Yeah. Syndicate. 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 Yes. <laughs> and that was about the twins. And it was such an empty world. Mm-hmm. Even though you're in London, you had nothing to do. Nothing was weirder than, like, keeping up with them and watching the detail of the towns getting worse and worse mm-hmm. as the games were coming out. It was yep. crazy. It felt like going back in time. <laughs> That was the point. Well, I mean... (laughs) 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 Okay, we saw the trailers for Red One and Nosferatu. Yes. We'll start with Red One. It's great. (laughs) It looks very expensive. Mm -hmm. And, like, it's going to be very bad. (laughs) Not a single joke landed. No. And he's trying. (laughs) Chris? Chris is trying. He's trying, and it's just... It looks like a parody. Like, I would Almost. expect this to be an SNL parody. <laughs> yeah, to be a, a super strong elf? Yeah, like a spy espionage Santa Claus thing. Where they're taking it way too seriously. <laughs> I love that it comes out November 15th. Yeah. That That's not even close. Yeah, but the one that does come out on Christmas Day. Yeah, Nosferatu. <laughs> yeah. Which is just... <laughs> cheer all around Mm -hmm. um that that was more my style yes (laughs) (laughs) that was like oh these shots are really well done this one has like creativity and imagination and thought and like i don't want to roll my eyes until they spin out of my skull (laughs) playing with shadows Mm -hmm. a lot oh that was cool the hand thing the hand over the city that was really cool it was when they opened the door and he has his dogs next to him Mm mm-hmm 
and you only see the shadows of them standing mm-hmm. there. Like how he didn't see his face? Nope. <sighs> He's going to be ugly. I know. Who plays him? Bill Skarsgård. Oh, man. <laughs> He's probably going to be unrecognizable. Uh, <laughs> He's uh, doing a lot of shit. Yes. <laughs> Eggers, Eggers said that when he became Nosferatu, he, like, was no longer Bill Skarsgård. He became this monster. Nice. Yes. So, like, he really got into the role, according to Eggers, which is cool. I mean, I guess it's what he did when he was Penny. Oh, uh, he would break Pennywise uh, to make sure the kids were, like, okay. Yeah, but with the adults, he didn't care. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually very sweet watching him, like, do a role, like, doing a scene with the kids, and then you hear them yell cut, and then you see him go, you doing okay? Was that all right? <laughs> <laughs> Just, like, go back to being a human. <laughs> he is pretty creepy, and I'm excited for Nosferatu. Red One, we'll find out. It's going to be more fun to watch the box office tank, <laughs> especially when you got two, three heavyweights in there. I, I liked the... Can we consider J.K. Simmons a heavyweight or uh... just a fan favorite? He's a heavyweight. Uh, this is he's I feel like he's barely going to be in this movie. Yeah. <laughs> I I like the idea of seeing other holidays. Yeah. Yeah. Like we see like a jack-o-lantern which is probably Halloween theme. Well, there's the headless ghost ghostman. Jeez. Horseman. <laughs> headless gorse guy. <laughs> He technically carries around a gourd, so I'm not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> the headless gourd guy. <laughs> uh, yeah, Krampus, Krampus. Mm-hmm. There was snowmen. Yep. And they... they polar they, bear. They were there. The polar bear, I could tell they spent way too much time and effort animating that polar bear. Yep. And it did not look good. No, it did not. <laughs> For how much effort they went into making all that fur. <laughs> So, box office trolls. Box office trolls. Some fun things have happened. Some haven't. Mm-hmm. Inside and Out 2. Inside Out 2. Jeez. Inside and out. <laughs> <laughs> the third one, they well, get out of her head. <laughs> <laughs> uh, still dominating the box office. Unsurprisingly. With Bad Boys 4, Ride or Die, still holding in at number two. Okie dokie. Uh, the Bike Riders is number three. It's a movie about bike riders. I've never even heard of it. <laughs> uh... Oh, man. Who stars in it? Austin Butler. Okay. Uh, Norman Reedus is in there. <laughs> I should have I should have guessed. He people, loves his motorcycle. <laughs> people were upset that he looks so disheveled. What do you mean? Hey, if you look at him, his hair and his beard are all grown out. Uh. And he's riding his, his motorcycle. And he was saying in interviews, he had to grow his hair out for Daryl mm-hmm. for the second season. And so that's what you're actually seeing. Oh, okay. I just thought it was cute he was in there because he is a motorcycle guy. Well, it's at number three, so it's doing pretty good. Uh, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, I don't know how it's holding in like this. Seven weeks, yeah. Seven weeks. And no one cares about this movie. Not a single person is talking about it. No. (laughs) Number five, Garfield. Yeah. Number six, If. Uh Uh-huh. Number seven, The Exorcism, which has gotten just terrible reviews which one's this one yeah it's just another exorcism there's so many exorcism movies two of them came out in the same year yeah both starring russell crowe not related to each other oh this is one of them yeah, yeah there was another one called the exorcist that also had russell crowe as the main uh, the posters look too similar yes it looks like comical levels of similar <laughs> it's weird um thelma i'm not too sure what that is mm, no like thelma and louise Maybe. It's from Magnolia Pictures. Oh. Uh, number nine, The Watchers. Okay. And number ten, yes. He made it. He's here. The, the best boy. <laughs> Ghost, right here, right now. Yeah. Which is about that band that we won't stop talking about, um, Ghost. Yep, 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 yep. And it's their first movie, and it is a live performance along with um, some, what? Like a lore. It, it, there's lore for the band, so mm-hmm. it, there's like, I don't know how to explain it more than that. <laughs> like there's scenes that play into the story of the, the band. Music. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and the fans are loving it, and it's doing great, and it, it got number 10, and I'm really happy for him. Hell yeah. Well done. Good job, Papa. <laughs> so, we've been watching new Master Chef. Oh yeah, we have. And then Tuesday, 
you made us go back and watch old Master Chef. I did. Is there some things you want to talk about because yeah. they look incredibly different? They look so I went back to what I knew was a good season, season three, arguably the best season. Um... Playing with doggos? Just, just get out from underneath the desk, next to cords. Great podcasting. <laughs> Professional. <laughs> Went back to season three because I knew it was the best season. Um, and yeah, totally different. The saturation. The saturation's t like way more vibrant in the old season. Gordon has hair. Uh, auditions <laughs> took two to three-ish episodes, mm -hmm. but we like, I don't know, we focused on some more than others. Yep. It, it felt like it went faster and I felt like I got a better sense of who these people were. Mm-hmm. Versus were, how it works now. The judges, there's a difference in one of the judges, because Graham Elliott left, mm -hmm. and he was, re Aron replaced him. Yeah, after a while. And Aron is way nicer mm -hmm. than Graham is, they're, but but in this earlier season, all three of them are really mean. Yeah, they're all, they're, they just don't hold back. Where with the, these new seasons, they feel very precious. Mm -hmm. Like, even if they're like critiquing or complaining about something... It's still like, well, you're doing an okay job. I don't know. The seasoning is just not quite up to par. We're back in the old days. Like, I don't know. This looks like a giant pile of garbage. Like, dry, dry garbage that you didn't season. It's terrible. This is disgusting. You're proud of this? You get out now. You're yeah. doing, like, they're just <laughs> yeah. tearing into these contestants. <laughs> it's when Joe does that. You're proud of this? And he does that head thing? And you're like, oh, dude. Oh, my heart. Why? <laughs> it's just a home cook. <laughs> also, uh. Uh, with the old season, during the auditions, it was just a one-on-one -on -one where they were, like, they had five minutes to, like, finish up the prep mm -hmm. to, like, give to them. Where they could, like, chat with the sh home cook, like, get a better sense of their personality, ask them questions and things. Nowadays, they do all that stuff in a completely separate room. And the judges will come in and, like, chat with them for, like, a little bit. Be like, what are you making? All right, keep an eye on that. And then they'll leave. And we just don't get, like, a sense of their personality. It has been years. Mm-hmm. been over a decade. Yep. I don't know why they made certain changes like that to the show. Yeah. It might... I, I feel like they have a bigger budget now than they did back then. Yeah, and another... They big, have giant set pieces. I, I know. <laughs> another crazy thing with the old show, because we made it a good couple episodes in, the contestants, a lot of time we would cut to their interviews... Like with the camera, the one on ones. Yep. And they would be talking about the other contestants. Like they'd be like, Oh, I gotta keep an eye on that guy. I think I think he's trouble or oh that one, he's a loser. He he needs to get kicked out of here right away. Like they would be talking about the other people in the competition. Mm -hmm. Nowadays they only ever talk about themselves or the judges, usually Gordon, if it's some girl being like, Gordon was so handsome and cool. <laughs> or they'll just talk about what they're doing. They're very self-centered in that way. Maybe to make it less competitive? Maybe, but the competition's the fun part. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's the whole point of the show, right? I feel like maybe just the showrunners don't get it anymore. <laughs> it's also, all of Gordon's shows kind of became the same thing. Yeah. He's got three different styles that he does. Mm -hmm. He's got his competition shows. Yeah. Right? He's got his um, uh, travel shows mm -hmm. where he likes to cook outside with them. And those ones are never too good. <laughs> He's had like seven and they've all failed. <laughs> yeah, the probably, right now he has Uncharted with National Geographic. But like, that definitely got canceled. No, it's still going. How? There I don't know. There hasn't been a season. In There's like a new years. season right now. What? Yeah, season four. It's been like years. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then he has... Uh, the kitchen nightmares, mm -hmm. hotel hell. Yeah, like the like the review style. Twenty four hours to hell and back. Uh huh. Yep. Uh -huh. <laughs> and those are his three different ones that he swaps through. Yeah, maybe he's just gotten bored. He's just going through the motions. Maybe. I just, I don't know. We keep coming back. Should we stop supporting him on this? Maybe. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, I do enjoy his cooking shows. I mean, I'd rather take the Great British Bake Off any day of the week. <laughs> yeah, but you only get one series a year. 
There are others I could watch. There's Celebrity Bake Off. No. There's The Holiday Bake Off. Oh, my God. <laughs> you can watch The Holiday Bake Off while you get ready for Red One. I tried watching The American Holiday Bake Off, and it was horrible. It was, it like, tinted everything blue, and it just made me feel sick watching it. <laughs> so, we watched a documentary called The Brat Pack. Yeah, I thought it was just called Brats, actually. Okay, Brats. It's about the Brat Pack. Uh-huh. Who was a group of famous young adults, adult actors in the 80s, mm-hmm. who started making more mature films for a younger audience. Yep, yep, yep. Um, a lot of famous. Breakfast Club. Yep, yep, yep. St. Uh, Elmo's Fire. Pretty, pretty in Pink. Pink. Ferris Bueller. Mm-hmm. Right? And it was about um, how this article came out in 94, 95? Yeah, something... And it was supposed to be a piece about Emilio Estevez, but then the guy changed it, the writer, Mm -hmm. into grouping in all the other actors his age and basically calling them out for being spoiled, talentless punks. Yeah, it was was not a glowing review, but he called them the Brat Pack in this review, and that name, like, really caught on. Mm -hmm. And I, understandably, because not only does it, like, sound good, It's, like, a good mouthfeel kind of phrase, (laughs) but also, um, like, playing into the Rat Pack. Yes. Which was a famous thing from before. The famous uh, Mm singer-actors, Frank Sinatra was their leader. And there's a Frat Pack, which Will Ferrell was part of. Mm -hmm. Um, But the Brat Pack... So... It's been years. It's been, like, what, 50 years? A lot. Remember, this was the 80s. (laughs) Andrew McCarthy, who is an actor, uh-huh. decided to do this documentary where I guess he wanted to start beef all over again it, about it, this. That seems like the main thing he wanted to do. <laughs> and so he calls up all his famous friends who were with him at that time. Mm-hmm. And, he and a gets couple a, of other people who are unrelated, like Brett Easton Ellis. <laughs> yes. For some reason, Brett Easton Ellis was in there. Um, I thought that was funny. But, like, he does talk to Emilio, he talks to Demi Moore, mm-hmm. uh, Rob Lowe. Rob Lowe, yep, yep, yep. And as he's talking to them, you realize quickly that what his initial plan was for this documentary falls apart on his face. Uh-huh. And it's Emilio Estevez right off the bat. Yeah, immediately. <laughs> he was very standoffish with him. Uh-huh. Emilio was not okay with doing this. But he also was saying, put it behind you. Yeah. It's over. Like, so apparently they didn't like the being called the Brat Pack. Mm-hmm. Um, and every single, like, like media professional or manager they talked to or director, they all were like, no, that was a great thing for you guys. Because it gave you guys, like, notoriety. Mm-hmm. People knew who you were. This was an amazing thing for you all. <laughs> and so uh, the idea that they were, like, offended by the Brat Pack title, like, I guess being called a brat isn't super charming. No. But... I don't think... <laughs> but they took it to the lengths where a lot of their careers ended there. Yeah. I mean, some of them. I think the ones that didn't get it, let it get to them were able to continue on and do things. And they're the bigger names. Yeah. Uh, Emilio Mac- Estevez. And Andrew McCarthy, whose career really went nowhere, yes. is seemingly the one who had the biggest grudge about this name. And that's the whole point of what this documentary was about. So, <laughs> it's an hour and a half long. I do not recommend it. No. <laughs> Uh, unless you're really interested in 80s stuff, other than that, walk away from that one. That mm. that was a terrible documentary. It was not good. Aimless. I'm, it was mostly just Andrew McCarthy. He, he, paying a professional with a professional camera to film random scenes that he filmed on the fly. Like, yes. a lot of the beginning is him, like, walking down the streets of New York, mm-hmm. and he's, like, very noticeably out of breath. And I'm like, this is how we're starting? Yeah. <laughs> you didn't want to sit down? <laughs> Whatever. I was waiting for 6 o'clock to roll around. Mm -hmm. I needed something. Because at 6 o'clock last night was The Bear. Yeah. The Bear, we've only, what, finished the first six episodes out of ten? There's ten episodes? Yes. Yeah. Or either six or seven, I don't remember. Okay. This show won many awards at the Emmys last year. Or this year. For season two. Season one is amazing. Season one is the masterpiece. Season two is decent. Yeah. Season three, it fell off. It's not, it's, and it, it really sucks to say, but it's not doing it. <laughs> no, there is no real overarching plot. No, every episode feels 
kind of floaty and aimless. Mm -hmm. And every time the credits start to roll, I'm like, that's it? Yeah, it just ends. It just stops. And then you just start up the new episode. And then you're like, what flavor is it going to be this time? And, like, the, the main goal of the season is they want to get a Michelin star. Um... But how are they doing that? By doing things that are obviously bad ideas for the restaurant. Yes. Like that's established immediately that they all think a lot of Carm's ideas are bad. Non-negotiables. But they're doing it anyway. And now here we are, six episodes in, and we're still doing these same things. Yep. And it's... I, there's no smaller personal goals to be met here. No, that's another thing. Yeah, they don't have personal lives much anymore yeah like marcus his mom passed away and every single scene with him is about him like being sad about this yeah um and i'm like okay this is a developmental point for the character but he has to be going towards something he can't <laughs> also just be sad about mom the whole time well <laughs> yeah richie he's got his daughter yeah, but we're not going anywhere. But, but then we did that weird <laughs> scene where her new stepdad wanted to talk to him about it. That scene was weird. It's also, like, lasted too long. Yeah, and it's awkward mm -hmm. because the way the, the stepdad's playing it and you're with Richie where you're like, dude, just say what you're going to say so we can move on. Yeah, a lot of the scenes feel that way where it's just a little too long for what the conversation is. Like, they're trying too hard. That's honestly the, the vibe I get. They're trying too hard to make every scene that big scene. They're also obsessed with staring, using camera shots to just stare at digital clocks. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's... Ugh. The lighting mm -hmm. sometimes is way too much. Yeah. There's a flicker effect. Like, it's... Did they shoot it on film? I think they did. It's obnoxious in certain scenes. Yes, that church scene. Uh-huh. The, there's a light... Carmi's sister is in a church praying, uh -huh. and there's a light coming through the window, and you can tell it's it's supposed to be sunlight. Yeah. But it's so blaring bright mm -hmm. that it it takes away from the moment of her praying. And you just see the like deterior not deterioration of film. That's what. I, it, yeah, but you're seeing the celluloids pop. Yeah, it feels almost like they filmed it way too dark, and then in like their editing software blasted the light and saturation on it to make you be able to see it yeah but we're like losing like information on the the, the lighting in the <laughs> restaurant's fine but the lighting in the kitchen kills me uh-huh i don't like that blue and i think it might artistically be like a part of it that it's supposed to feel like too much and overwhelming artistically to Maybe. match the themes of the show i don't know six episodes okay first of all the first episode skip so skippable. Not a single thing is worth watching. Barely any dialogue. It's like all flashback stuff of like a montage of seeing Carm's adventure of when he left to his culinary learnings over the years. Yep. Where he's hanging out with Adam Warlock. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and the guy from Community that never graduated. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, John Cena shows up in this show. That uh -huh. was weird and jarring. Um, I don't know if I can keep dealing with John Cena showing up and everything. And again, all his scenes felt like it lasted too long. It he's like... funny and he's great with the the actors that he's with. Mm -hmm. But it's also like, that's John Cena. You just put John Cena in the show. Yeah, it's not like with like John Mulaney with last season. Yes. Where he's like obviously being a character. He's like wearing glasses. He's wearing a different outfit than normal mm -hmm. and he's like just another member of the family floating around where this one john cena rolled up and then we punch in on his face and look at all this john cena and he's the star of the scene now yep and he's not i, I, I don't know <laughs> he's supposed to be another fact like one of the other facts yeah and i'm like he looks nothing like them though he doesn't even look like the same ethnicity as these people <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we're going to finish up The Bear, but I'm going to say right now, season three's not working out well with me. No. And I... the critics are also like, hmm, it wasn't there. It's too artsy. Too artsy and too dragged out. We're, we're, we're on an episode where it's just Tina's backstory. Who's a secondary character. Yeah. Like, she's important. She's barely done anything all season. She goes to the farmer's market. Yeah, she struggles with making this pasta dish. You know, getting overwhelmed with it. I, I, she, she's been a bigger character 
previous seasons. I feel like they're only doing this now because they realize she didn't really have much to do in this season. Not everyone needs to have an episode. No. And it also kind of... But there's a whole dishwashing crew that like... they've never focused on. They just randomly appeared and they've stuck around for two years now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Like, I kind of also assumed, like, the, the, the story has her showing up and working for the, the, the restaurant while Carm is off on his culinary adventures. Yes. I assumed she was around a lot longer than that. Me too. But like, I guess not. <laughs> yeah, she was an administrator. Uh, yeah, whatever. Mm -hmm. Okay, and it's time to talk about A Galaxy Far, Far Away. Oh. Episode 5 of The Acolyte. Yeah. <sighs> Episode 3 feels so far away now. It, it really <laughs> I does. I like that. <laughs> I'm like, okay, so we did do something weird. Because episode five was everything I wanted it to be. Book closed. We're done with this story. It was fun. I can't believe there's... I don't know what we're going to do from here. It was crazy. It's wicked good fighting. These, as many complaints as I have about some of the more recent Star Wars things, the use of the Force and lightsabers mm -hmm. in these most recent stories... Uh, has been amazing, especially yep. here. <laughs> it's all about the Sith Master. Mm hmm And him taking on, what, seven Jedis? It's really, uh, like, okay. big events that I didn't think would happen. Uh, there's a lot of them in <laughs> this one 30-minute episode, and mm -hmm. it's like, whoa, that was crazy cool. Mm hmm Uh, big reveals, so you get to find out who he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um... We don't know his motive. We don't know his origins. The mystery continues to like like churn, as we we sit we sit here and theorize all these things. <laughs> I will give this spoiler, because I know some of you are dying, and I want to know what's going on between the Sith Master and Master Soul. Yeah. For them to put down the lightsabers and just start punching each other. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... That felt personal, huh? It did. And I was like, Anakin and Obi-Wan never started punching each other. Also, how many, like, Jedi Masters know how to throw hands like that? Yeah. I, I was like, whoa, like, they really do not like each other. Yeah. I'm so excited for the next episode. It's been great. It's been a bit of a roller coaster, but I think this is definitely a positive development. Yeah, we're finally getting out of it. There's just so many things they still haven't told us. Like yeah. the incident between the two sisters yeah. on their mother planet, yeah. if we want to call it that. Yeah, it is a mystery. So I imagine that's what the last three episodes are going to be, is like giving us all the information now, finally. Mm -hmm. And then culminating into its final... They are, <laughs> they are talking about the hopes of having season two. I don't think it needs one. I don't know. We, I, almost, I mean, I don't know how the story is going to end. I guess I, anything can happen. I <laughs> always thought that this was going to be the law of two. It might be. We started building towards something like that. But we don't know. We'll it, see. If we, it's still up in the air because we don't fully understand this Sith Master. Mm -hmm. But he's pretty cool. He's pretty cool. Pretty, pretty dang cool. <laughs> so you got anything going on this week? Um, yes. Episode three of Ruby Reversed Fates. Nice. Is I definitely going to be out, I think, by the time most people are listening to this. Nice. Uh, and then episode four will be next week. I'm working on that one right now. Yahoo. Uh, and then I'm going to stream. I'm going to start a Nuzlocke on next Friday. I'm nervous. This Friday? Next Friday. Okay. Not... So July. Yes, July fifth, okay. I think it is. Okay, we wait till the next episode to talk about that. But... Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm nervous. I'm excited, but I'm nervous. Nice. <laughs> I've got a fun little video to edit together. Hopefully, I'll have that ready by next week. Nice. And we are going to finish up One Piece finally. Woohoo! Um, I had a nice little break. Nice. <laughs> but yeah, there's coffee break. Sorry, it was a little late, but we also wanted to watch the bear. Didn't have the energy to do it last night. Yeah. Um, it's been a brutal summer. It's been, yes. <laughs> it's been long. It's been hot. It's been long. It's not even July. It was like 8 o'clock yesterday, and the sun was still up. <laughs> yeah, that was weird. I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> it's supposed to be like sleepy time now. <laughs> so I hope you guys are staying healthy, stay indoors. Run that AC as much as you can. Put on sunblock if you are going outside for extended periods of time. Or wear a hat. Yeah, just a hat. <laughs> just a hat. Uh, umbrella hats. 
Yeah. We should bring those back. Sure. <laughs> Just saying. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Have a good week. Bye. Now you're fucked. And then you just have to, like, try to withstand two more rounds of this Gigantamax Pokemon, and you know then your other Pokemon aren't going to be strong enough to tank a hit from it. So there's going to be, like, three Pokemon wiped out. If you don't know what you're doing, or if you do something wrong... That's part of the game. You I, chose the Nuzlocke. Yes. <laughs> I'm, it's part of the fun, but I'm nervous. <laughs>